Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today let's talk about starting our very first podcast in WaveLabcast. When we first open up our WaveLabcast, we're typically given the option to see what's called the startup assistant. I have already opened up the program and I have the startup assistant in front of me, but let me close this for a minute. And if I go up to my file in the upper left-hand corner, I again have the option to open the startup assistant. I can also hit the shortcut of Alt and Home. But however you do it, this is the startup assistant. And in many ways, this is the gateway to getting started on any project you do in WaveLabCast. The first thing you can see on our assistant is we have two options. One says podcasting and one says audio editing. But let's focus on the podcasting option for this video. And the next thing you're going to notice is you have three tabs here. One says recent, one says new, and one says open. Again, for simplicity, let's focus on either the recent or the new. With recent, if you've already begun projects, you're going to see a list, basically a history of whatever you've created in the past, allowing you to quickly get back into something you've already started. But let's assume for our purposes today that we're going to start right from the beginning. So we're going to go to this tab that says new. As you can see, WaveLabCast includes a list of different templates, and these are great launching points to get you started. Now, before we look deeply at these, let's move down to the bottom where it says our audio connections. And this is the first place you actually have a chance to get your hardware talking with your program so that everything is already set up for you. We have three different areas here. One says microphone, one says the audio device, and one says the speaker's headphones. If we go to the audio device first, this option right in the middle, we can see that we have a couple of things down here. We have a little drop down list and then we have a little gear next to it. If we start with the assumption that your sound card is already installed properly on your system and that it's working correctly, when you go down to this list and hit this drop down list, you're going to be given a choice of the different sound cards available on your system. And then whatever your specific hardware is, you should see this in the list. Now I am using a Steinberg sound card, so my sound card is right here at the bottom of the list. If I go ahead and click on that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I have my sound card linked up to WaveLabCast. So the next thing I'm going to want to do now is go over to the right where it says speakers and headphones. And again, I'm going to be given a little drop down list. And if I click on that, I'm going to be able to see what choices are available on my particular sound card. And I can select those to make sure that I can hear whatever it is that I'm recording. Now, by default, it already figured out what my left and right channels were. But if you needed to change something, here's where you could check or uncheck whatever you need. Now, in an effort to try to make things as simple as possible, I've also given you a little test speaker so you can make sure that your system is working right. Listen to what happens when I hit the little speaker. Left channel, right channel. And just like that, I now know that for sure my speakers are connected properly. If there was an issue, you would go back and, you know, readjust as necessary. Now, moving further, if we come over on the left, we have the option for the microphone. And once again, you're given a drop down list if you click on that. You should be able to see a list of available inputs for your particular microphone. Depending on what kind of hardware you have, these choices will reflect that. For my setup, the UR44 input 4 is the one I want. It's already selected. But now, just like I was able to check the speakers, I should be able to see myself talking with the microphone LED right here, which again confirms that everything is up and running properly. So the one thing you're going to want to keep in mind, if you're using a native system, say like a laptop where your microphone and your speakers are all included, you're definitely going to want to make this choice that says the Steinberg built-in ASIO driver. This driver is designed to take advantage of that exact situation. Once you pick that driver, if you go over to the little gear on the right, you'll be able to see what hardware is available on your computer. And even though it's the built-in hardware, you're going to see where the output is and where the input is. More than likely, if it is the built-in hardware, there'll only be one choice. But if there are other choices, you'll be able to clearly see what those choices are and then decide which one is the best for your speakers or your microphone. And then you will continue on to run the tests like we just talked about. So once you've accomplished those three steps, selected your initial sound card, come over and selected your speaker configuration and tested it, and then finally checked your microphone and made sure that was correct, as far as the hardware setup is, you're good to go. So now let's go back up and look at our templates so we can get into this. If I click on my new tab, one of the very first options we are given is it says host and guest. I have found this one to be very useful for myself personally because it starts off giving me two tracks ready to go and I'm going to use that one to demonstrate. But let me show you these other ones real quick. Another option we have says host and two guests. As you can imagine, you're probably going to get three different ways to record in here. Or if you have the host and three guests, you'll have four tracks. A host and video gives you an option to add a video track. We'll talk about that coming up. 
a host and music and sound effects. It's going to add in a stereo track in case you want to add some music or sound. A single mono track, a single stereo track. All of these things are going to make a lot more sense as we go through them. So let's go back and do one. We're going to start with the host and the guest. I'm going to click on that. And it's given a name, which you can change it if you want. Maybe you give it a specific name if you know what kind of episode you're creating for yourself. Or you can leave it just like it is, whatever works. And then below that, you're given the area where everything's going to be recorded and the file locations. You can look at that, see if that makes sense for what you want. Or if you need to, you can click on the folder and then create your own destination folder. For simplicity, again, we'll just take the default and go with that. For this podcast, I'm going to go ahead and name it Our Podcast. And then I'm going to come down and hit Create. And now we are in the work area in what's called the audio montage. And if we look here on the center left area, we have something that says the host. And if we come down below that, it says the guest. And these are your two tracks where you can begin recording right away. Let me show you how easy it is to begin recording right away. I'm going to go to my host. I'm going to hit this record enable button, which turns it on to like a flashing red light. I'm going to come down to the bottom to what we call the transport area. And on the right, I have a record button. At this point, it shows me that the record shortcut is also the little asterisk on my number keypad if I want to use that, which I probably will be using as we go any further. But I'm going to start by actually hitting this record button. And as you can see at this point, I am now recording right into WaveLabCast. I can talk about my ideas. I can say who my next guest is going to be. I can basically just talk about whatever I want, however I want, and really almost as long as I want. And all my ideas are going to be captured right here. Once I'm done or I'm ready to pause for a moment, I can come down and hit the stop key and that's it. I'm ready to go. If a few minutes later I get another idea and I'm ready to talk some more, I can pretty much repeat the process. This time I'm going to hit my asterisk key to start everything. And again, I'm back up and running and I'm recording some more audio. And this is how we begin. Once I've got something going, I might want to check it just to make sure I'm on the right track. I can rewind back here with by moving my cursor and then hitting my space bar. And again, I'm back up and running and I'm recording some more audio. And that's how we do it. All right, it's going to wrap it up for this one. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the Wave Lab channel, be sure to do that. Keep you up on all the latest news, tips, and information as we continue to move through and get acquainted with Wave Lab Cast. And in the upcoming videos, we'll explore some other things to get you going on all your podcasting information. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.